Okay, for my final video in this little We're Alive series, I'm going to talk about the zombies, their origins, and an explanation as to the different types that we've got or seen so far. Obviously these are based on facts from the show and a little bit of conjecture on my part based on reasonable theories. Okay, where do they come from? Well, there was a fissure opened up in Inglewood in Los Angeles. Um, this released gases over a period of time from deep in the earth. You can ascribe to a hollow earth theory or hell, either one's fine. Suffice to say, something was held under the earth's surface and it bubbled out due to likely a fault line cracking um, and pressures from the gases over thousands if not millions of years. Residents of Inglewood were exposed to these gases and because LA is a big commuter city with airports, transport links etc, these caused people to start turning but not immediately. So they went off on flights, trips everywhere, a little like on um, planet, the recent Planet of the Apes where you see the map of people traversing the globe at the end. Um, it spread all over the world and then they roughly turned at the same time and the outbreak occurred. Um, where are the gases from though? Well it's theorised that the zombies were about many years before um, and they, for whatever reason they became trapped or sealed under the earth and decomposed and when they decompose their bodies turn into these gases or release these gases and it creates a cycle over again and probably due to some sort of natural disaster they were sealed in for this significant period of time so human life could evolve fully without them. Um, now the different types of zombies you've got the sort of standard biters these are the form that a human takes when they are infected normally um, either through the gas or through a bite from another biter. Um, they turn into a new type of creature. They don't, aren't just a human that has suddenly lost their mind, they actually undergo physiological changes so their organs, their muscles, their skin all become improved for want of a better word. So they've got better endurance, they've got better strength, they've got thicker skin, they lose the colour of their skin as well to some extent and they are driven by an urge to bite and reproduce through obviously attacking people and also consuming people for food <laughs> when they can get their hands on it. They also eat mushrooms and other things but, um, but if they find a human they're certainly not adverse to eating them because technically I suppose they are a different species to us once the change has gone ahead. Um, a change can occur over either a period of seconds or with some people who seem to have a natural resistance a period of days um, in the show there's been at least someone who's taken a week to change. And there are some people that seem to have a natural immunity to the bites. Um, when they have undergone a change, because there's been physiological changes in their body and their, the way their brain is wired, they can understand a different language in the form of runes and ancient symbols. Um, it's not known if this is the whole language translated to them or whether or not it's just some sort of mystical symbolism. This is one of the nice points about the show where they leave that a little bit ambiguous so your imagination can work but they can certainly understand a new type of language and symbols that can control them. Now the next type of zombie is what we call a smart one. Now speaking of those symbols if one of these symbols is put on a person um, scratched into their skin and then they are turned then it allows them to retain an element of control and intelligence over their actions. It doesn't mean that they're just a person who just happens to look like a zombie. They still have the zombie drive and the zombie urges, but they also have a level of intelligence allowing them to problem solve, um, in some instances communicate, in some instances use some basic human language, and somewhere sit on the fence between full-blown zombie and human. Um, these appear every now and then because obviously they won't be commonplace because you have to have the symbol put on you but they're generally used as sort of lieutenants by the main baddie or people who want them to be under their control. Um, other than that their physiology is the same as the biters. The next type is what's referred to as beer moths. 
Now beer moths are people who have been injected with performance enhancing steroids or drugs that an athlete might use um, and then turned. Uh, I think if you, in, from what I can tell from the series, if you inject someone after they've turned it doesn't quite work the same and it can produce deformities and not go the right way. But when they're injected before they're turned, minutes before even, um, the body seems to absorb it and when they turn they then multiply their muscle growth um, exponentially. So instead of becoming just a little bit stronger and a little bit tougher, they turn into great big Hulk sized creatures. Um, and they have massive amounts of strength. They're also covered in tumours because the drugs seem to speed anything else that might be in your system. So eventually they will die due to tumour growth, but this is over a period of months, if not a year. Um, and you, there are reports within the show of seeing ones lying on their side sort of gasping for breath because their tumours have grown faster than their bodies can handle. Um, they have low intelligence and they don't seem to be able to be controlled very well by any other parties because they're just massive hulks and they're very hard to take down. There's been ones that have been shot in the face, in the eye, etc. and they still keep coming. Um, the next type is what's called a little worm. Now these are sort of the pinnacle of the attacking zombies. They are pregnant women who've been injected with various performance enhancing drugs again, so steroids, um, sort of cardiovascular enhancers, anything you can think of that a, <laughs> I suppose a Russian athlete might take, they've been injecting into a pregnant mother and then the mother has been turned. What this has caused to, to go on in their system is that the drugs get filtered into their fetus, their baby, um, and then the baby turns inside the mother as well, and when it's ready it bursts out alien star from their stomach and then grows into a sort of super hybrid zombie. It's got long arms, long fingers, it's got extra strength when it comes to jumping, um, problem solving, It's everything on it is enhanced but not like a beer moth where it's covered in tumours because it's had it as a sort of fetal stage it's able to control that growth a bit more and take it on as more of its natural, um, its natural state of being. Uh, these are very dangerous and they also have the other trait where if you get bitten by one you will turn into one similar to it um, so you'll take on its traits uh, because I think the drugs are probably part of its system and its makeup um, that is transferred to people who it bites and people who it bites always turn very fast so there was an instance in the show where one got into a city Boulder Colorado and just by biting a few people it exponentially multiplies throughout the city and wipes it out very very quickly. Um, the next type is Ink who is the sort of main bad guy and the chief zombie. He's covered himself in runes and symbols of protection. Now it's worked out that at least one of these runes of protection um, helps him maintain his personality and higher mental functions. He was a genius to begin with and it's theorised that if you're smart to begin with you're a smarter zombie generally anyway after you're bitten but he also retains a high degree of his personality and again it, he was a serial killer and a psychopath and it's theorised that because of this when he got turned into the zombie everything in his mind and body sort of clicked and went right so instead of turning him from a maniac into <laughs> a maniac and a killer because he already was one and he had all these symbols on him it was sort of a um, serendipitous event where everything just fell into place and he's sort of the antithesis the ultimate version of these zombies um, so he has the ability to undertake experiments he's got the strength the speed the endurance of all of the other types of zombies and he even has his own little office places. Uh, there's only been one version of this type of zombie that they've written about so far and that was Ink because he had these symbols on him. Somehow we knew that something was coming. Um, that has yet to be explained. So whether or not there is a supernatural element to this or there was some sort of predicted event, it's not known. But certainly he exists and those symbols can be used to 
people's advantage thereafter. Um, he's dead now, as far as everyone's aware. He got blown up and had his legs chopped off. <laughs> um, but those are the main types of zombies that have been put out in the show at this time. Anything in between that you might have heard in the show are just versions of the other zombies growing and evolving. Because the other thing that's made clear is that all of the zombie types um, grow and evolve over time. So the beer moths, they start off sort of as bodybuilder sized men and then they get bigger and bigger and bigger and they just keep growing. So then they will ultimately they get covered in hair and have various tusks and things sticking out of them. The same with the little ones, they start off as little sort of baby sized <laughs> zombies crawling around getting people and they get bigger and bigger and their limbs get longer and they get more and more mature. And then once they reach a level of maturity, all, all the zombie types, they age very, very slowly. So they become a threat that will linger for a long time. Um, that's the explanation of where they've come from, um, the different zombie types and their abilities, and everything else is really speculation as to how and what they are, and that's due to the writers being clever and letting your mind fill in the blanks on it. But I know that a lot of people, particularly me when I was listening to it, wanted some explanation to it, and hopefully this, <laughs> this is useful to some people. Thank you.